How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Now, when it comes to portable panels, they can be super handy for different RV setups or where you need to set something up, plug that in your portable power station and be up and running in minutes. And it's easy to tear down, nice into a small, efficient package, so it's easy to store away. But the question is, are you gonna get anywhere close to the rated output on these type of panels? So let's do some testing today with a EcoFlow foldable 400 watt panel. Now, this one's been on the market for years and years and EcoFlow just sent over their new modular setup, which is a pretty cool design, is actually a combination of 125 watt panels that have some pretty neat design changes that EcoFlow's done to make those panels pretty unique in the marketplace. But most importantly, how much power do these things actually bring in and how close do we get to that rated power? Let's do multiple different scenarios, not just perfect sun, but also light clouds, moderate clouds, and when the sun starts to get lower in the day, what is that power output out of both these types of panels so you can make that smart decision for your own setup. So let's jump into it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at both of these just in case you're not familiar with EcoFlow's foldable 400 watt. It's all one piece, a little flimsy. You're not gonna get it set up perfect here. The bag which carries the one piece also serves as the stand and you're up and running in a matter of one or two minutes. And then from the one side you have your MC4 connectors coming out and that's it. And then I'm running that into some EcoFlow units on the inside with power analyzers to give us our test points. Now on the modular setup, each one of these units is 125 watts and really they're standalone units. You can buy one 125 watt panel, you can buy two or you can buy four depending on your needs. And then you're just wiring those together through a little different setup than we're used to. This kind of looks like a daisy chain so most people would think it's in series but it's not. So these are actually XT60W connectors. They're a little different. They have both pins on the one side and that results into wiring each of these panels in parallel. So they are not wired in series, they're each wired in parallel. And then we would just have one side open there. You'd cap that off to make it weather resistant. And you have a conversion cable that would take your XT60W and then that would take it over to your standard MC4 connectors. Like we said, these are bifacial in design and the stands allow for the most sun coming from the backside as well. And the stands are flexible for multiple different angles so you can match it up to your season and your location. Additionally, they have a cool integrated angle finder where this dot will catch the shadow and then you just wanna set that right in the middle of the circle to make sure you're optimizing your angle and you're getting it perpendicular to the sun. And then to pack them away, if you buy two, you get one bag like this. They'll both fit back to back against each other. And if you get four, you'll get two of these bags to store them away. So let's look at five different test points that I took with a variety of different conditions. And for your own reference, it was about 53 degrees Fahrenheit outside today, but our different scenarios are sunny. We have light clouds, moderate clouds, heavy clouds, and you'll see a variety of power outputs. And then we'll look at the percentage difference to see does that actually change as the conditions change. Now we're just landing the power. One side's going into the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus and the other side's going into the Delta 2, but both are going through the same little power analyzers. These power analyzers are super handy and really help you understand your system and actually pretty darn cheap, but you will have to crimp on your own ends and you'll see that link in the description if it's something you want for your own setup. So right from the top, if we just look at our rated expectations, we would do 500 watts, 400 watts, and then we would expect 25% more power coming out of our modular setup. Our first testing scenario was with sunny conditions. So we had sunny conditions, and this was at 1015 a.m where we saw 410 watts out of the 500 watt panel and 250 watts out of the 400 watt panel. So looking at a percentage difference, that is gonna be 64% difference. So quite a bit more than what we are expecting if we just go off our rated numbers. And that's why you wanna test these things to understand is sometimes just what is on the marketing literature is not what you're gonna see in real life. But let's go through the other four points as well. Next up was a light cloudy scenario. This was at 10.45 a.m. So we're getting closer to getting some good sun and this is in the winter months. So we are kind of limited in the amount of sun we get per day. 292 watts is what we saw out of the 500 watt panel 
and then 164 watts out of the 400 watt panel, resulting in 78% more power coming from the modular design. So you can see we are getting quite a bit more out of the 500 watt. Now we have another sunny scenario at 11 a.m. And this is the highest power that I was able to get out of these panels today. So we had 466 watts coming out of the 500 watt panels and 294 watts coming out of our 400 watt panel, resulting in a 59% more power out of the 500 watt modular. So again, we are consistently higher and consistently much higher than the rated. But that is not the biggest difference that we'll see. This next one was moderate clouds. That was at 1 p.m. And out of the 500 watt panel, we are seeing 216 watts. And out of our 400 watt panel, we are only seeing 102 watts. So that is gonna roll up to about 112% difference. That is a major difference and you need to consider these things, especially if you're gonna be out with your RV in winter months and you know you're gonna have a lot of overcast skies, this could be a huge difference in filling up your batteries with these type of panels. And then the last one is a heavier cloud scenario. And this is getting a little bit later in the day for at least our winter months. This was at 2 p.m. And what we saw out of the 500 watt panels was all the way down to 77 watts. And then the 400 watt was only putting out 46 watts. Again, resulting in a 67% more power coming from the modular design. Now, overall, I was impressed with the 500 watt module. I like the design. I like they're a little more rigid. It's a five year warranty. They're supposed to last 30 years, producing up to 90%. They have newer technology. So the efficiency rating is 25% on these 500 watt panels compared to I think 22.4 on your foldable. So it's just a better product. Now you're probably gonna have to pay a little bit more and you'll see the links in the description to see the current pricing depending on if there's any sales going on or not. But let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Were you expecting this much difference between the two? When you get to the lower light scenarios, the bifacial and the higher efficiency cells really prove out to be effective and make sure you can still bring in some power and fill up your batteries even when you don't have perfect scenario. Now, if you're looking to offset your monthly power bill, don't forget we have links in the description, both where I started off on getting solar on my own home, which was 11 kilowatts setup. In just a matter of minutes, you'll be able to enter your information and get the size of the system you need and the rough price of the system to completely offset your monthly power bill. Then if you wanna take on that bigger project and do it yourself, like I did on one of my rental properties, installing a smaller 4.8 kilowatt system with Project Solar, you'll see the link in that description where they'll walk you through your different scenarios and literally help you save over $10,000 on your install if you're willing to take on the labor yourself. Now we've been doing a lot of testing on different panels and really focusing in on 100 watt panels. I've done side-by-side -side testing on six top brands and you can check out this video right here where I roll everything up into one spreadsheet so you can compare dollars per watt and how many watts per square foot are you gonna get out? Again, so you can make that smart decision on your own design. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.